they win against Black. I think with those experiments, I think they can bring up lots of other things that they've been experimenting. I think this worked out perfectly right now. Maybe it will be a little bit dangerous later on as we saw Asmo then play last time. Didn't really, it was really not the best, but this one worked perfectly against MVP Black. Maybe we'll see something else happening tonight. Well, Tomb of the Spider Queen will be our map here for game number four. This is chosen, of course, by Blossom. I thought maybe we'd see Infernal Shrines, but we'll take the safer one here. This is a map we've seen a lot of picked uh, picked often by Blossom when mm -hmm. they win maps, which is their favorite. Yeah. So. And of course, Malfell again with the wave clear. This is on the only battleground we saw two ETC picks off, off of two different teams. ETC barely comes out any anywhere in, in the other regions too, but only on this battleground because ETC has a strong pressure on all lanes. ETC is also a great pick. Saw Gondar pick it last time they played the map, so that's definitely a really good thing that you point out. We'll see it late in the draft if we see it, I'd say. So I'd like to see the Anubrock ban from Blossom if it's left available. This is Spider Queens. So of course the lane pressure, the wave clear is very important for both teams. So Genji banned. I think this should be the Anubrock ban. It's actually looking towards the Uther though. Which will give Black Anubrock should they prefer that. Not a great map for Malthale. It's going to be Ariel. This is it. The, because Malfurion went down and Uther is often banned. And there are so many comps with Ariel that you can bring out. There's Vala, there's Taikas, there's a burst damage, and also cooldown with the wave clear. So there are lots of options, you, lots of team comps you can make with Ariel. So that's why it's the first pick material. But oftentimes, it was countered by Chromie. We also saw it happening on the exact same battleground with Mighty last time. Let's see if Blossom is ready to bring in the Fnatic in them. Well, they take out Blossom, or sorry, the uh, Malfurion and the Medivh. So the Blossom style of Malfurion continues, or sorry, uh, Medivh continues. I wrote the wrong thing on my paper for some reason. I just read it out wrong. So we'll see. They don't want to get support choked here. And right, we'll see what they want to protect with the Medivh. Okay, Malthale comes out. With Tyrael, it's going to be the... Perfect Archangels coming out. You know, like, almost everyone in that last game for Blossom had hoods because Chogol had the hood skin, and they had the Ariel and Malthale that were wearing hoods. Mm, that's right. Um, you only need Tyrael to make it perfect. There was, no, there was another hood, too. I can't... What was it? Let me look back. Uh, Is there... Medivh. He had the hood as well. Medivh's hooded, so... Yeah. Hood comp. <laughs> that's a thing now, officially. It's not hoodie weather here in Korea, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's, it's hot out there, man. It's hot and, hot and humid here, as you can tell if you've been in Korea during summer. But Malthel does have a lot of wave clear. Now this is the sky blue comp onto MPP Black now. So you can <laughs> just like describe what their comp is based on what color or what their hair is <laughs> like. I mean, you could say like Anubrock's got kind of like a shell hood going on. Um, but Anubrock is going to get picked up here. It's no surprise, but uh, what I wanted to say <laughs> before you made that blue, the blue comp reference was the Mal the Maldale Strong uh, as a solo laner means he can just sit up at top, do that wave clear you were talking about, heavily sustain himself. His, his abilities don't really cost that much mana. So you just ease the wave, then cues it to get his health back. And this makes the four man rotation a lot stronger for Black. They don't really have to worry about Maldale in the top lane. The Vala coming out as the ban which will force an unusual Ariel hero here to be used. And the ban on Diablo, which of is... Of course, they do have a very bad memory from MSB against Diablo. So, and this is the map battleground on it. So they are thinking about all the charge into the walls. The stuns could be very painful against, against Ariel who has no cleanse. Maybe they're also considering picking a DPS who's very squishy like Lunara since Vala is already banned. Well, with uh, the Diablo banner, it's quite unusual, but we have seen a lot of Stitches Medivh, and I think that that's probably where Blossom is looking toward. You've got the root follow-up, you can portal with the Gorge. There's a lot of different things you could do with the Stitches Medivh pick here. So 
know, Kael'thas as well with the stitches. Now you've got so many more follow-ups. So I like this a lot. So much CC, so many different ways to pick off and punish Malthale, for example, who doesn't have really any escapes. So I'm actually already kind of liking the draft better for Blossom here. I know Malthale is strong and has decent wave clear, but this is not a specifically a map where he's insanely strong and doesn't really give an insane amount of value here yet, whereas the Ario pick doesn't pair with anything yet on the draft. But Vala is banned. Do you really want to build Gul'dan into this? I'm not so sure about that. So I'm liking how Blossom is playing this so far. They have the hook, so pressuring Gul'dan, of course. Gul'dan would have crazy wave clear on Spider Queens for sure. But if they get one hook off, even on the Ario, they will have no escape. That's the thing. That's exactly what they're looking for. And having two mages on Blossom, they don't have any DPS though. They can get some burst damage out of Kel'thas and also Medivh. And Medivh seems like he was not really- Oh my god. What?! Oh my god, g -Club. This is real! Wow. It's Chogao from MVP Black this time! <laughs> okay. Well, he got the Anubrag. Can't cocoon him. Aha! Gotcha! Guys, if you're tuning in right now, you guys did that at the right time. You guys came here to watch Stukov, but I bet a bunch of people are logging in right now to get some Chogall hype. People are using their shards right at this moment to buy Chogall. Actually, I'm not even sure if you can buy them with shards. I got them from the event like a million years ago, but anyways, I'm sure people are trying to get that Chogall right now. Yeah, you can buy with gold, of course, but yeah. this is the revenge that MVP Black always look for. They love to have revenge with the same picks. Well, the... the I lost my the, words! The revenge is real, but they also have Malthale, so no Malthale to counter them. And they have Ariel, and we saw how well that worked last time when Wiz wouldn't, couldn't be killed. So, what worked before, I can't be critical of it, so Black is going to try to repeat what we just saw from Blossom. As we see, Greymane is left available. That's one thing that Black did not have to use against the Cho'Gall because it was banned by Blossom. So the Greymane here, the Curse Bullet, gonna be some extra damage. Kel'thas with the CCs uh, could definitely prevent Cho'Gall from moving, lock him down. It's hard to say who had the better draft against the Cho'Gall, neither team's having the strongest anti-Cho'Gall draft. And Black bringing it in late into the draft at the end here, so I like the way that they executed this draft. We'll see if they can close it out with their opponent's pick from game number three as we move into two with the Spider Queen. In blue, Blossom with Wiz on Malfurion, and Gondar on Stitches, Mora on Medivh, Dudu on Kel'Thas, and no chat on Greymane. And in red, MVP Black, Reset on Malfell, Sake on Gal, Cho Kyocha, Kyocha on Ario, Rich on Cho, and Tist on Ar Anubara. Rich on Cho, and Sake on Gal this time. They had the gall to pick it, G-Clef. That's right. And... We'll see how well this works. Kel'Thas wondering whether or not to go Convection here or to stick with a more common and safer uh, Mana Addict. Maybe. With, with, maybe. Uh, the, with what just happened there, yeah. he decides like, <laughs> okay, I probably should go Mana Addict. Like, maybe it's a little bit safer, okay? Even with all the protection they have, I think that's the way to go. And really having ma uh, Convection and also Master's Touch just ripping every single time, I don't think it's going to be... Very good for the team, of course. It's a solid choice, of course. Having the having the barrier later on will help him sustain and live so much more. Well, hooks have not been good from Gondor this game. Perhaps in the pressure now, the second week of HGC. He's not able to connect with anything. Got a minion earlier. I mean, he got wrecked, but we'll see if uh, he can step it up here. The early game not going to be the more more important hooks are going to come in the later stage of the game with the longer death timers, which in Korean heroes, this map usually goes very long, not so much in the West. So, dealing with Chogall going to be a challenge yet again, but the focus is going to want to be on the Ariel every time or punish the Anubrak when he darts in 
And then perhaps then the Aegis comes out early. Ooh, pretty good hooks yeah. coming out again. There's a good one. Again, the sustain is makes it so it's impossible to get a follow-up kill. But mm -hmm. but after 10, when they have cursed bullet, when they put every single resource onto Chagall, I think they can actually get a kill. Even with the heals coming from Ariel, it has to be on cooldown for the next few seconds. So if they put every single thing into Chogao with Kelda's burst damage, CC from CC from Medib later on with the late line, line seal too. I think they can get a kill onto Chogao. It's two kills too. Oh, well, I mean, it, it's it's really about the dive here that we're seeing yet again. Dudu actually even gets hooked there at the end. I'll try to save him, but uh, when you have the dive onto the squishy mage, like we're seeing here, it was the problem for reset on the previous map on Braxis, and now on Tomb of the Spider Queen, we're seeing the dive coming in onto Dudu. So punishing the mage, Mora should be able to get out. No, detainment strike is good. But anyway, Mora gets picked here as well, so we can see the dive is real for Chogol so far. He's just going in, having those extra heals from the Aureal. And starts to wonder if this is going to become meta after seeing it work so well twice now. That's exactly what I was thinking like, at the moment too. I'm like, well, this is like pretty solid. I don't know. Like, I guess maybe these teams potentially figured everyone figured this out and we didn't see it Ooh, last dude, week. Ooh, got picked off again. But it could be that uh, they just accidentally made the new broken thing. <laughs> I doubt it. I think this is probably pretty well planned. We just haven't heard anything about this. No whisperings of it in the Korean scene and no uh, no indication so far that this was going to make a comeback. Well, Chogal throughout lots of patches has been getting small buffs once and once every patch, like once every other patch, and no one really realized how strong Chogal is until this point. And it seems like both teams are really using Chogal right now and it's just getting body blocked body out blocking of Body blocking it. Kyocha comes over for the detainment strike. He is just struggling to get back into this. Wiz is like, I, There's I'm no not end. Ariel anymore. He's saying, thank God that Mora came at the right time. Actually, Mora playing Medivh this time. Yeah. There was also no no ammo onto those, those turrets on the wall, so they could just body block all freely they wanted, wanted to. With so, the sustain, he can just, look at this, 4v3, I guess. Yeah, 4v3, they get all three lanes pushed with this. The soul lane with Greymane against Malthale is Malthale favored. You have a new Brock with the Beatles in the mid lane, so they're getting extra soak. So they're basically going to get all at least two walls from this, possibly three. And as you can see, Rich just casually walks out while they get the kill onto Dudu. I think that's his third death this game. And this entire time, they've been pushing the, the middle fort at the same time. Greymane can only clear out one lane, of course. Got the Wet Weaver on the bottom, but this mid fort is, I'm pretty sure it's almost gone. Well, bot fort here. No chat is dove upon. Look at the body block now from reset on top of the extra choke point there for Tiss to look for the knockup. No chat barely gets away, but this is now another lane that's no ammo. The mid lane lost its wall. The top lane lost its fort. And Vivi Black looks to regain composure here, having a dominant performance in this second game. One fourth of the way to level 10 here. As you see, Burn Flesh is taken for Kael'thas. Old here from Alphir, no cleanse. Is a oh wait, I forgot Alphir does a cleanse. What do I pick? <laughs> Is it, do I pick Mule? <laughs> well, they're diving in. They're right before ten, and Blossom, of course, down two levels. Just low on scaling, but okay, Alphir also going for more damage on Moonfire. Well, this invade continues, and if Blossom slow messes, if, if Blossom comes in and messes this up, <laughs> nice hook. Almost gets the pick. If they come in and lose a member, then Black gets 10 and they get wiped. So I like the cautious approach here. I like the hook attempt too. Had there been no burrow charge available, that would have been a pick for sure. But Blossom is just having to play very passively right now. They know this 10 is right around the corner. There's just not much they can do about it. So coming out now. Maybe the same builds from all members here. The uh, Cocoon can be very useful, can actually knock either Medivh or Malfurion out of the fight to remove that protection. And then Kael'thas is going to be yet again be the dove upon target. Mora knocked away from his portal, can't actually get in. Tiss drops down the cocoon, are they going to collapse on this? No chat, 
Find himself in trouble if so. Does have 26 gems on himself. Target's on Wiz now. And there is no way of escaping this. Good collapse there. This looks like it's probably just going to be a second Web Weaver turn in for Black. They're five gems away in possession from that turn in. A clean and safe one. Blossom is super passive because Black has been pushing so far because they do have better wave clear also. And we, if Blossom wants to bring back their wave clear, they have to have Kalthas in the front clearing all these waves. But every time Kalthas wants to step over the line, there is always Chogal onto his face. Just like this. So Dudu has to go back, really forces the lack of wave clear even more for Blossom. Smart plays coming out from Black right now. You can bet he's super happy he did not take Convection right now. <laughs> for, sure. for sure. He died like four, four times. times. His four deaths. Nearly five, but escaped that last time. Master's Touch still ongoing here for Mora, who hasn't died yet. He's had gotten close a few times, but this is going to be the double web we return in. Blossom can't contest without the heroics. So we'll see if Ivy Black just splits into three groups again. Heroics almost ready here for Blossom. Would have been so nice to have that just a moment ago. Here we go, the Burrow Charge dive in. They're unable to get the stuns locked together. Avoid that route. And back away, but the Subway push could start to threaten these keep walls. I mean, it definitely will in mid. As you can see, they're on it already. Ooh, Lots gorge. being prepped for this. Gorge with the portal. I think they're looking for it. There, here we go. We're, are, we, are we getting a portal here? Okay, here we go. This big silence comes in. And they will actually kill, kill Chogal immediately in this fight. So that's the quick double, if you will. That actually is going to kind of shut this push down entirely. Rich still trying to split push and, uh, sorry, reset, trying to split push and set up that bot lane. Actually gets himself caught here for just a moment. As, as we pointed out from the beginning, they literally spent every single resource to take out Chogal. But that was actually pretty quick too. And Ariel, a little bit far away for the time being, really lacked. They got two kills, that's exactly what they wanted. So I think after hitting 10, they have a really good chance to come back into this game now, I think. Well, they have a, over 100 gems carried. They need to turn in the first ones right away. I don't know who's currently leading possession right now, but... It's a lot of gems carried by even you can see your Mora with 22. I so think Greymane is holding like close to 40 now or something. something. like that for sure. Now, MVP knowing they're likely going to lose the turn in no matter what, there's not much they can do to delay this. They take the boss. Meanwhile, actually, because Blossom is being so passive, perhaps is scared of a party bush, they go down to their Merc Cap, which isn't available. Not entirely sure about this rotation for Blossom to the bot lane. And they give away a boss or free and fail to get a turn in. So definitely some weird macro play out of Blossom in this moment where they should have at least at worst case scenario gotten a turn in. They weren't Instead, they just yeah. walked past an already taken Merc Camp. Yeah, they weren't really sure where Black was at the time. Time being there's the hook onto oh, Gord. This is, and sick. this is perfect. Onto Togal. And there's there can not be any protection, no ages available for Togal at all. Okay, yeah, we'll see if Reset is going to make this worth it. He does go ahead and drop down his Heroic in the fight, doing a lot of extra damage here. The protection is coming out here for Kyocha, uh, where he gets that very quick hope regen coming out from Malthel's damage. So it ends up being a like positive trade, really like 1v4 there for Reset. But they don't accomplish much more than that. Going to wait for Rich and Sake to respawn so they can come over here and look for turn-in denial at the gems. Blossom is carrying such a dangerously high amount, 124. I mean, this is really risky. If they lose a team fight, they just lose all their gems. I think that's giving them more pressure because if they die trying turning in, it's literally nothing. They, can, I think they're really looking for the pick and really lose all the pressure onto a multiple lane. There's a Gorge again. Let's see if we can get a pick. Mora comes around from the side. No following up CC, so Tisk will actually escape from there. But those hooks with the Gorge connecting Gondar seems very scary right now for Black. Oh, we are going to have the Mana Barrier available here with the uh, Mana Addict quest completing. So a little bit more protection here for Dudu, who had so much trouble in the early game to stay alive. He's also got a ton of mana uh, at this point, too. We'll just continue to grow with that and get a bigger shield. This is a nice attempted trap here. The protection is real onto Gondar, though. Not the best portal I've ever seen. But even with the detainment strike, the protection came out. And he will live. As you can see, Reset is just pushing the bot lane. He's just soaking 
trying to get them up to that level 16 talent tier advantage. But again, the gems carry that keeps going up every about every time I say it, like by 20. <laughs> we're at 120 before now, we're at 144. Really scary moment for Blossom. And the more they carry, the more risky it becomes to turn in, the less likely they are to look for those turn ins. Cuckoo's mouth. Now Firian from the side, and here comes Malfo from the side. Dudu is the target that he's looking for. Wiz gets out positioned on the back line. They're looking for multiple picks here. Okay, here comes the dive in from Jogal. Gondar finds himself caught. Nice Leylon here, but Wiz with the ice block will finally get taken out here. But uh, we're going to see the body block here. The shove now on to Gondar. He's caught. Detainment strike doesn't get the stun, but it will get the kill eventually there. As is a two for nothing trade. Not a trade, a steal stolen away. Black looking for the third one on tomorrow. They will get it. And, they and this dropped, is all the gems I'm talking about. They, they dropped about 70-something. 80, deaths. I think, even, at this point. Like, this is the big worry. This is the fear when holding this many gems. Oh, my goodness. They're just tearing one by one apart. They took out after hitting 16 with all the aerial healing coming out. Ugh. Lacking all the sustain from Blossom. And I got to say, they were a little bit caught off guard and out position. They were really trusting too much onto Medib's portal. They made an aggressive play when they didn't have vision. They made a passive play when they didn't have vision. That was the wrong one. The aggressive play was also the wrong one here. Dudu's positioning, getting punished there by reset. So now Black's up two levels. They have the keep uh, down. They have the catapult pressure for the rest of the game. Top keeps threatened by that early boss and all the gems removed. And Black may get another back-to-back -back when we return in here. They're close. Right now, holding 50 gems, looking for 10 more. It's one off, and I think they, they will get it very soon, and eventually. And Blossom, they've been really pressured around the map, even though they have Medivh flying around and spotting all these spotting all these heroes up on top and bottom. Blossom, because they were, I feel like because they were holding so much, they couldn't really be aggressive and go in because there's the Cocoon, the initiation, all the engage from Black. There are just more tools. And Blossom is literally looking for the hooks and the gorge and the pickoff. Okay, well, look at this Ugh. blow up already. Gondor's like, I got him! Like, well, might be turned around on you as the upgraded uh, turnaround here. The cocoon goes down. <laughs> the cocoon looks pretty upgraded there, but it was it's not. It just was like really big for some reason. I'm not because entirely, of stitches. Yeah. <laughs> not entirely sure why like that like freaked me out for a second. I was like, whoa, what is that cocoon? I'm like, they're not even level 20. Why would you ever pick the level 20 cocoon? Nobody does that. But uh, this is going to be the triple kill. And Black will close out the series. What a weird one this was. I mean, the Chogals on both sides. The Chogal Aria, we saw Maltel several times this evening. I think the drafts that we see in the next series are going to be very much more standard. And the drafts that we see tomorrow, I think, will normalize a little bit. Big Leyline Seal here, but the Web Weavers look like they want to finish the job. Catapult Beans in the bot will help it happen. And that's going to be it, 13 to 4. MV Black with not the sweep they were looking for in this series, but they finished the series with smiles. And as you said, even though it doesn't feel that significant to just look at it from this perspective, but when every other top tier team, I'm talking top three, is 3 0 Blossom, if you're the one that drops the map, that is going to affect your standing. Yep, that's right. And we saw a very interesting draft coming out from both teams with Chogal happening. And I've got to say, Blossom really showed what they could do. They really show their potentials. They have something against these stronger teams and they can take maps off of MVP Black, possibly off of other teams to waiting Mighty Tempest and also L5 later on. So I think Blossom will be in the, not in the bottom as they were in phase number one. I can think they have a very good chance to actually climb up to the middle place spots, like fourth, fifth. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with you on that. I don't know exactly where they're going to fall. I think it's too early to call, but I think that given what we've seen so far, you could make a bold prediction like that one, and we'll see if they can follow through with it. Uh, obviously, they might replace GG in terms of ranking with GG, of course, disbanding. So um, I assume that we're going to hear from Rich because of all the Meltel picks. He played Cho in that last game as That's well, right. uh, and it's his opening day match, so he probably will be the post-game interview um, MVP, as we say, although it's not technically an MVP award. Uh, I really want to see what is discussed about the mouth tail being left open on Battlefield of Eternity because that was a bit crazy for me that we saw that occur and they just, like, they just left it open and then 
took it. So I would like to see like what his thought process was, leaving it open, and then how he felt about just being able to take it. Because um, I, I feel like Black wanted to beat that pick. And then when they didn't take it, Black was like, well, I guess we just get it. Um, that would be something that I'm personally interested in. And if we don't get an interview, then I'll probably just text Riz uh, and ask him. I, w- I actually want to ask Wiz what their thought process against against just leaving that open for for Black to actually take it. I'm pretty sure Varian was the answer with the Colossus Smash that we saw at the very end, but not the best one. Of course, as you can see, these Blossom is experimenting a lot, a lot, as we just saw from this series. And this series, I think, is the best series so far in phase number two. Really? We I don't were, know, I man. Was, I like my I was very hyped. We never see Chogal in Korea. We saw it twice already. We also saw Braxis. Yeah, from MVP Black. I guess in terms of weird picks and craziness, I would say I would agree with you. But <laughs> got to go back to that Mighty Miracle series. That was a really good one. That was a really good one for sure. But Chogal seems very OP from what we just saw with lots of protection, especially with Medivh on your side. I, I think that Chogal is to be not underestimated, mm-hmm. especially with how good the Ariel positioning has been all day, the Medivh protection we saw Blossom prioritizing there. Uh, kind of a cool pick. I don't know if it'll become meta, but you could definitely see why we would have seen maybe some of the Chogal picks in the previous matches going into Phase 1. Those were the matches that Chogal looked really terrible and looked fell f- really flat. So you could see it when it's executed like this, why it might have been picked back then. But it's time for interview. I assume it's with Rich. If I'm wrong, I'm crazy, but... Jacob's going to bring you guys a translation amidst the sounds of these trumpets. And he's here. Whoa. It's Rich <laughs> on... Dun. Here he is. And of course, back to HCC in MVP Black. How did it feel playing on playing on competitive today? We did practice a little bit. And it was actually something we had in store, and Blossom used it instead. Mm. <laughs> so are you saying Chogao is the future in yeah. phase number two? Yeah. I think it depends on the draft. Oh. I think Aureo is really highly put on supports right now. Well, today you're Iraq. <laughs> A lot of the fans, the Korean fans and global fans has been expecting a better play from you a little bit. <laughs> but your rag was a little bit off. How was the game? It was very painful. Mafia was... I was just trying to sustain in lane. It's just... <laughs> but we were both, both holding weapons in our hands, but mine was apparently so much weaker. And of course, coming back with game number four, the revenge. How did the players respond? We thought it was doable at the end. Ah, and it seems like it's from the series that we just had. It seems like if you pick Chogao, you win. And here comes the Avatar interview. Question from the fans. And we've been hearing that you're on a diet. Has it been continuing after you came into the team house of MVP Black? I lost 20 kg before coming into the team house. But within the last just within the last week, I gained one kilogram. Every time we were done screaming, they say, "Let's go out and eat." Especially Sake, he wants to drag me out. As you gain more weight, you can give more mechanical skills too. 
템나서 그런 건지 자꾸 먹이려고 해요. 아, 음. I think it's because Saki uh, is, is jealous that I lost so much weight. He's trying to 네. get me fattened up again. 불리역이고. 원래 그런 재미를 좀 이렇게 음. 숙소 생활 하는 건데 <웃음> 저도 이제 That's the fun of Team House, of course. 사실 리치 복귀. Anyone in, anyone in the stream who like doesn't know Korean culture probably just thinks you're making these translations <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm not lying, guys. How's it? How's it like coming back into the team house? Atmosphere is super good, but as you can see, it's a little bit of 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 a 그러면 사실 이렇게 지금 들어와서 이제 선수들과 다시 합을 맞추게 됐는데 그 연습을 통해서 또 어느 정도 together, 자신감을 좀 얻어냈을 것 같은데 앰블 블랙 work. 이번 시즌 어떤 행보를 걸을 것 같습니까? How do you see yourself your journey into the phase two? I think we're very likely to go to the clash. 할수 있을 것 같아요. 근데 플리즈 컨도 갈 수는 있을 것 같은데 거기서 이제 and also to the blitz con 너무 잘해져가지고 yeah. 많이 걱정될 것 같아요. But European teams are very strong, of course. It's something to worry about for us. 할수 있을 것 같기도 하고. Can you become the new champion of the blitz con? He is not too sure. 어 템페스트가 많이 까다로울 것 같아요. I think Tempest is very very strong right now in Korea. How do you think Mathel is right now? I thought Mathel was very weak at the beginning when it came out. But I watched a lot of H82 actually playing Mathel and I learned from H82. And after adapting into myself playing Mathel, I think Mathel is very strong. Uh, and you want to have any shout-outs at the end? For the fans? About six months that I am and now I'm back in HCC. I will just keep striving myself to have better performances for the competitive. And that's the interview with Rich. And here are our results. As we had the 3-1 score for MVP Black. And it's been a pretty interesting series so far today. The two goals coming out. Two goal versus two goal. We'll see if that continues. As you can see, Rich was clearly prepared to play the uh, two goal today. The MVP Black had been working towards that. We'll see if L5 and Tempest are upcoming match, which should be a much closer series if they'll be running the Cho Gall as well. So definitely a high <laughs> chance that we see that, considering that we saw it so much in the first best of five. Yeah, that's right. But as you said, we're not done. We're going to have second match, L5 versus Tempest, coming up right after the commercial break. So keep your pants on, as Wolf said. We're going to be right back on the same channel.